Hey y'all, welcome back to Doing It DIY. If you're new here, my name's Allison. Welcome, I can't wait for us to DIY together. Today I have five easy Dollar Tree Halloween DIYs that I think you might like. Everything you need to complete these DIYs, if you wanna follow along, is in the description box below. It is finally feeling like fall weather in Southern Ohio. We've been in the upper 90s for what seems like forever. So it's finally starting to cool down a little bit. We've had rain the past few days and it just makes me want to DIY some fall stuff so that I can get my decor in order for the upcoming fall and Halloween holiday holidays. Oh, holidays, I'm so excited about that. But this first little DIY is just using the little firecrackers I made from the 4th of July video. I'll link that above if you wanna see how I did that. But all I'm going to do, I found this super cute um, little trio, and it wasn't a trio, it was, it was four different um, things on Etsy and I thought I want to recreate that. I will show you the inspiration here in just a little bit. But what I'm going to do is make a pumpkin, Frankenstein and a ghost and all three of these are different sizes. If you do not have these Dollar Tree signs that I used, you can definitely just use any kind of wood that you have. It'll definitely work. They can all be the same size. They don't have to be three different sizes. I just wanted to repurpose the firecrackers so that's why mine are the different sizes. So I'm just gonna start first with some orange and then I'm gonna go in with some Waverly chalk paint in the color moss and paint the um, middle size one for Frankenstein. This orange, I know looking at the video, comes off way more peach than it does orange. The one thing I regret is not going back and repainting this, but the pumpkin face was the hardest to paint and to draw so once I had that on there even though I was totally unhappy with the color of the pumpkin I did not go back and fix it so I just decided we'll just do very muted muted colors and that's the inspiration right there so cute I love this one so much and it's so much fun you can display all three of these together you can kind of break them up and add each one to different various parts of your decor which is what I did and they just add the perfect little something I swear they're so cute but I'm just gonna freehand the faces just looking at the inspiration photo and trying to copy it as, as closely as I can like I said this pumpkin face was so hard I don't know why it was so hard it just really really was and even all the way at the end the pumpkin was the one I was least happy with so if I had it to do over I'd probably do the cat because I was so not happy with the pumpkin but what are you gonna do anyway I'm just freehand like I said the um, the faces on each one of these little guys and I am not the best drawler for sure I, I can paint really well um, but I cannot draw. My daughters are all amazing artists. Uh, all three of them. My husband's an amazing artist. My youngest daughter is just absolutely out of this phenomenal um, at drawing. My middle daughter is so good at drawing that she actually gives tattoos. She has her own tattoo gun and all that. So they're really good at it. I am really not. So my faces are a little bit wonky. They're definitely not perfect. And I think that's okay, especially for something like this because it's very rustic feeling anyway because that's what my decor is. So if my faces look a little wonky, that's why guys, they're not perfect. I am not great at drawing and you'll definitely see that. But all I'm gonna do is just go ahead and draw those on and I just used a pencil and then I took some black paint and this is just the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I just went ahead and outlined the faces and then filled in each of those outlines and I'll be quiet and let you watch me do it.
And then what I'm going to do once I have all the faces on is just take some Waverly chalk paint, the color ivory, and you see that I added a little bit of highlight into the eyes of the ghost. And then I just went ahead and filled in Frankenstein's eyes. And you are going to see the pumpkin face. That's not what I end up with. And I don't believe the photo that I took has, uh, we'll see, we'll look at the photo in the end and see if it's, if it's correct, but I did change the face on the pumpkin just a little bit, but I'm just also adding a little tooth on our Frankenstein, and then for our pumpkin, what I'm going to do is take, this was a piece of um, greenery that had little pumpkins on it, I don't know where it came from because I bought it at the thrift store, but I'm just going to take a piece of that because the actual stem is a little bit thicker. You can use anything here. You can go out and get a branch off the tree. You can use the little wooden pieces that you can buy at the Dollar Tree and Hobby Lobby. Whatever you have, this is just what I had on hand. We're just going to make a little stem and add those leaves. And I'm just going to go ahead and add that on with some hot glue. I do go back and add just a little rustic bow using some jute twine because I kind of wanted to cover up that um, hot glue because it required quite a bit to get that little piece on there. But you'll just see, I'm just going to wrap it around my hand several times maybe <laughs> we're just gonna wrap it around my hand I think it did 10 times and then we're just gonna cut it off and take a little piece of jute twine and stick it through the middle I forgot to add it through the other side but that's perfectly okay and we're just gonna tie it into a little bow and then I'm just gonna hot glue that right at the top by the little stem and that is it for this I'm just calling them a trio of ghouls that's what we're gonna call them I hope you guys like this one. This next project is so simple. I'm also repurposing the 4th of July beads. Again, I will link that above or below. I'm not sure which one, but it will be in one of those two places. I had these beads. I knew that I wanted to make some Halloween beads, so I just decided to go ahead and do that. And again, I used some orange color that I do not like, and I end up going back and changing it. So I'm just taking the, that whole little garland, that bead garland apart, and I'm gonna keep the little tassel and then I'm just going to go ahead and paint the same beads that were red and blue before with orange and black. I also use different size beads and I keep quite a bit of them natural because that's what I like. It fits better into my decor. But if you wanted to add some white in this, you definitely could. If you wanted to paint all the beads, you could definitely do that. This is just a how to put it all together, not so much you have to do it exactly like I do it because that wouldn't be much fun. But you're just going to go ahead and the beads do require, especially if they already had paint on them, a couple coats of paint. And then I'm just going to go ahead and take one of these little wooden gift, gift tags. I love these. They add something every single time to whatever project I use them for. I just got them at the Dollar Tree. It's a pack of 10, I think, for a dollar. But I'm just going to go ahead and use some pumpkin orange to paint that. Let that dry, and then I just used this super easy little Boo SVG. I linked it down below for you guys. If you don't have a Cricut, you can definitely just go freehand this or print out the letters or even use the little letter stickers that you can, the rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. You can definitely do that. Whatever you want to do. I just thought the Boo was cute, and I thought it added something, and I did have a little wooden gift tag on the previous garland, so I just kind of wanted to recreate the exact same style just using different colors to fit in better with the Halloween. And that's what we have, that's what it looks like. And then we're just gonna go ahead and take some jute twine, tie a knot in the end, and start threading our beads in, in whatever pattern you want, and whatever colors you want. You'll kind of see that this is what I do. And the orange is definitely muted <laughs> again. And the reason why is because that fits better with my decor. I don't like the bright orange. You won't see like purple or anything like that in my Halloween decor. I definitely used to do that. We used to have the most awesome Halloween setup outside of our house you've ever seen. We had a full on graveyard. We had skeletons. We had bats. We, it was just everything covered in spider webs. It was amazing and lit up. We don't do that anymore because I like fall a little bit better than I like decorating for Halloween. So I don't have a lot 
of Halloween decor anymore, but I do like to sprinkle it throughout my fall decor. So you'll definitely see me doing a really good combination of both over the next month or so before we start getting into Christmas, which is what I'm most excited about. And I'm just going to take some ribbon. I think this came from Walmart and I'm just going to do a little hot glue simple ribbon just to put on to our tassel and our little uh, our little wooden gift tag just because it adds a little bit of something and I, I like this. You definitely don't have to do this, but it's super easy. You're just going to add some hot glue and kind of stick it together. I'm going to dovetail the ends and then just go ahead and hot glue it directly onto our little tassel. And once we have the bow on our tassel, we're just gonna go ahead and add some jute twine to our little boo sign and then tie that to the tassel too. And that is all there is to it. I love the way this one turned out. Project number three is my favorite. I don't know if you're not a part of the Dollar Tree, Farmhouse Dollar Tree DIY, Facebook groups, but I'm a part of so many of them, and I've seen this little plastic haunted house, dollhouse haunted house, floating around everywhere, and this is just my version of it. This is my favorite. I love the way this turned out. I haven't seen any done exactly the way that I've done mine. I haven't seen any lit up, and mine is, so I think that's what makes mine just a little bit different, but the actual basic principle of how to do this is the same, I think, across the board. You're just going to go ahead and paint your little piece of Dollar Tree uh, dollhouse with whatever color you want. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color elephant for the bottom and then ink for the top. This is just the very front of a dollhouse. It is made so that it hooks on to the other pieces, I assume, and makes kind of like a little village thing. I'm not really sure, but it's hollow inside, as you can see, and there's no back to it. But all I'm going to do is go ahead and paint everything at the bottom with the gray, and I'm going to paint the roof with the black. I'm not as careful with the gray as I am with the black just because I don't want to get it too mixed in. But we're going to go back and outline some of the window trim in the black as well, which really sets it off and really helps it pop. This is a very slick, shiny plastic um, house, and I hadn't tried using just acrylic paint, but knowing how acrylic paint works and how chalk paint works, honestly, if I were to choose to use one of the two on this, I would go for the chalk paint just because I think it's going to stick a little bit better. Um, at least that's my experience. So do whatever you want here. Once I have the bottom and the top painted, I'm just going to go in with that black and I'm going to outline the window trim on the inside, the door, and then there's a little bit of brick on the bottom, which you'll see in a second. And I'm just going to paint that as well. And this is what you should have at that point. It looks really cute. It was super easy to paint. It dried pretty quick. And then I took the two little dolls from inside and painted those white. They're going to be like little zombie ghosts. Um, so what I did now is I went ahead and took a combination of Apple Barrel White and Way Really Chalk Paint and the Color Elephant, mixed those together, used a little fan brush and a light, a light touch, and just went ahead and went all over the house with this combination of light gray. It really, really like helps pull out detail. It instantly gives it a more sinister old school, like that's the haunted house vibe. Definitely immediately. And you'll see that. I love the way that this comes out. And I think that if you do not add something like this to kind of, you know, set it off, it's not going to have as much impact, but do what you want. Again, I'm just going to take some hot glue and I'm going to hot glue one of those little ghost ladies to the front. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue one of the ghost ladies to the upstairs window because what's scarier than a ghost in the window, right? And then I took a cotton ball and just really tore off a tiny little piece and kind of spider webbed it out. You can, of course, use the fake spider web that they sell at the Dollar Tree for sure. I just didn't have any and a cotton ball worked perfectly. So I'm just going to take that cotton ball and some hot glue and go around each one of the windows um, just like this. It's a little bit hard. It's a little bit tricky. That uh, cotton wants to stick to the bottom of your brush for sure. 
but it worked. And then I'm just going to take a pack of the wired fairy lights and I am going to get my head in the way, obviously. It wouldn't be a video if I didn't. And this, these fairy lights are on wire, so they're very easy to bend and manipulate. So I'm just going to take them, I'm going to turn them on so that I can kind of check as I go to see, make sure it's showing through. And I'm just going to bend that wire and hot glue these lights so that they shine through these windows. And the spider webby cotton ball is back there and it kind of mutes the lights a little bit. It looks so great. I have not seen any of them done with lights inside and I love the way this turned out and it's the favorite of everybody in my house as well. Look at the little ghost girl up in the window. I hope you guys like this as much as I do. In our fourth project, you guys, I wanted something super easy. You cannot get easier than this. We're just using some of the little glass Dollar Tree salt and pepper shakers. You can use any glass containers that they have there. It'll totally work. This is just what I had on hand. I'm going to use some of that Hello Hobby paint in the color ivory, and I am going to paint my little jars. It took a couple coats of paint because these are supposed to look like old spell jar ingredients in a witch's house. You don't have to get really, really crazy and make sure the paint's completely covered. I do go back at the end and use some chestnut and go distress it a bit so that it looks old anyway. So if some of the glass is showing through, that would be totally okay. I, however, gave just a couple of coats of this ivory paint and let it dry completely. And then I went ahead and took some Mod Podge and some cinnamon to make it look kind of rusty and old. And I'm just going to dab that Mod Podge here and there all over the lids of my salt and pepper shaker. Super easy. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more and I'm going to dump cinnamon all over it to make it look a little bit rusty. And then just pick it up and shake off the excess. And you'll see at the end that it definitely doesn't stay this covered and it actually looks really great in the end. But I'm not even sure if I'm doing this right. I've never done anything like this, but I see people talk about it all the time, so I thought I'd give it a try. I'm not sure if it's right or not. <laughs> Leave me a comment and let me know if this is how it's done. But that's what my bottles look like in the end, and this is what my lids look like. I did try to put some, you'll see me pointing to it, some, um, once I put the cinnamon down, I put some more Mod Podge and more cinnamon on top, and it made like this weird paste, and that's what that looked like. I, I didn't like it at the time, but it looks good in the end. So then I'm just going to take these, I have Dead Man's Toes, um, Dead Man's Toe, Dead Man's Toe and Eye of Newt. You can use whatever you want here. If you want to use the SVG that I used in your Cricut, I have that link down below for you guys, but I just use whatever. You can use anything that you want that you think looks cute here, and then that's it. You just put the lid on, and those could not have been easier, and they're just really fun to add to the decor for Halloween. All right, last but not least is our Hocus Pocus broom sign. I know that I put that in my last fall video, but I wanted to add it here too because I love Hocus Pocus. I think it fits in perfectly with this little, this little group of DIYs for Halloween. And I just wanted to show you how to do it again. You can go watch the original video for that up in the corner, um, but it's super easy to make and that's why I wanted to include it here. I'm just gonna take one of the round Dollar Tree signs. I think these were from, um, summer and I'm just going to go ahead and paint it with some ivory chalk paint from Waverly. I think I actually used Tello Hobby here, but this is so simple. Anybody can do it. My next DIY is going to be a sign made out of foam board. I made one for Christmas last year that said farm, you know, was the farm fresh Christmas trees. It was my favorite thing to make. I hand lettered and painted everything and I think that's what I'm going to do again. So I'm going to do a whole video of just a sign for Halloween that I know you guys are going to love, especially if you love Hocus Pocus. So I also have this SVG and I will link it below as well, but I believe it is in the original video. So I'm going to go ahead and just link the original video below so you guys can see that. It's also going to be linked up at the top for you guys as well. And I just go ahead and cut this apart and then just place the vinyl onto the sign just to kind of see where I want everything to be. And then I'm just going to take a ruler and I'm going to mark out and make some lines because I want this to look like planks 
or shiplap or whatever you want to call it. I want it to kind of look like a palette, like a, a palette that just had a round shape cut into it to make the sign. So I'm just going to draw my lines and then I'm going to go back and take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to take my square again and I'm just going to run my X-Acto knife over that line right up against my square several different times to give a little bit of a groove. It turns out so perfect like this, guys. I promise. But it's super easy. And then you're just going to go ahead and take your vinyl and put it onto your sign. Super easy. Again, I really needed to move mine down a little bit. I'm really bad about placing vinyl. I am not sure why I always struggle with that, but I somehow do. So we're just going to put it however we want. I love this sign so much. It's so cute and it was so easy to make. And it took just a round sign, a little bit of paint and some vinyl. It was so easy. All right, and that's what our sign looks like when all the vinyl is on. I went ahead and painted the black with the black, the back with some Waverly, Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. You guys, it is super late. It's like 4 a.m. here. <laughs> I'm tired and it's starting to show. Um, all I did here was take some smaller beads that I got from Hobby Lobby and painted them black and then string them on a little bit of jute twine. And then I'm just going to hot glue that to the back. And that is it, guys. I'm going to reinforce it with a little bit of wood. I think that's a piece of craft stick. So that's all there is to it. I hope you guys like these DIYs. If you did, please leave me a comment below. Give this video a big thumbs up. If you're not following me on Instagram yet, what are you waiting for? It's at doing it DIY with Allie. That's A-L-L-I-E. I hope you guys were inspired to create some of your own DIYs for Halloween. I will be back soon with more fall DIYs. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Bye-bye.